heard all over the country on KHTS AM 1220 in Southern California. We're in the LA market, so if you're listening, we have listeners all over the country. I have a wonderful listener, Tommy Cairns. Uh, Melody's listening from Ventura, California. Phenomenal. And uh, our show uh, is being live, photographed live or videoed live. It's live. Broadcast live. Broadcast live. So we're also on YouTube. There's cameras all over the studio. Yeah, this is big time, big time, big time. <laughs> so my co-host here is my first guest. Uh, Tom Karens was the HR director for Homeland Security. Incidentally, our show brought to you by Lisa's Tax Service. So if you have any issues with your taxes, go to Lisa's Tax Service and uh, she'll take great care of you. She's also uh, certified to uh, represent you in front of the IRS. So uh, Tommy Karens, uh, I don't have a bio on you. Uh, wh where were you born? I was actually born in a small town in uh, Green, Green Lane, Pennsylvania, just outside uh, really? Allentown. Allentown, But I grew up uh, in Trenton, New Jersey. Oh, I know Trenton very well. I also know Pennsylvania. One of the most beautiful uh, states, I was going to say countries, one of the most beautiful states in the United States. It is, Bucks County area. Oh, I've been to Bucks County. Wow, it's <laughs> gorgeous. The rolling hills, the farms. Uh, so... Uh, Tell me uh, a little bit about your life. You you uh, grew up in Trenton. Now, uh, Trent. I've also been to Trenton. I've also been escorted out of Trenton uh, <laughs> following a police car, so I don't want to get into that. They're so, probably still looking for you, I bet. Let's quickly, high school. What was the name of the high school you went to? I went to Steinert High School. Steinert High School. Interviewing Tommy Karens, HR Director for Homeland Security. 230,000 people reported to him. Prior to that, he was at... NBC Studios for over, almost 19 years running that. So we're going to find out, did he meet any stars? Uh, are there any stories? So uh, you graduate high school barely, and then where did you go to college? I went to uh, Actually, I went to community college, uh, Mercer County Community College, for a couple years, and then uh, transferred to uh, what's now Ryder University in uh, Lawrenceville, just south of uh, Princeton. Did you have any idea in junior college what you were going to do? No. You know, that's actually a good point because at that time I didn't know. We had family friends who one of them was an attorney. So then we thought, well, okay, maybe I should pursue uh, law. And uh, you needed uh, any kind of business degree just to get into law school. So I just decided to pursue a business degree and not really knowing exactly what I wanted in that business degree went after an accounting degree and uh, it was shortly probably two three years into that I realized I would never graduate college if I stayed an accounting major and and even if I did uh, no offense to my accountant friends I didn't want to do accounting uh, so I, I did something that uh, probably a lot of people uh, would think was weird I read the college catalog and looked at the various courses that were being offered and there were at that time uh, it wasn't HR it was called uh, uh, industrial relations I said these look interesting I think I'm going to try them and I did and I really uh, found myself there uh, enjoying those courses and, and then ultimately give me, give me one of the courses that you liked uh, what was the name of the college that you uh, went to? that was Ryder University Ryder. when I did that uh, actually the courses had they offered a degree at that time I would have gone into what today is organization development uh, but small groups, uh, change, organization behavior, I love those. I love my collective bargaining uh, classes. But the uh, funny part is when I, uh, I came out of uh, college, uh, I uh, was uh, drafted. Uh, at that time, there was no draft, but there was a lottery, and I won that lottery. Uh, and ultimately, I en enlisted into the Air Force. They guaranteed me a job in personnel. And so I took that. And then when I came out of that, my very first job in the public sector was as a job analyst. And I had to Ooh, go. That's what I want to be as a and, job. Well, analyst. I had to go back to viewing the classes that I took in undergrad, and there was one course that was on the Fair Labor Standards Act. And I remember the course like it was yesterday. I still had the text at the time, and it was boring. <laughs> really? The course. I mean, it was just dry and dull, uh, but it was anything but that in the real world. And uh, I, I enjoyed that uh, aspect, and that's how I. Uh, initially uh, got in. It was compensation was really what uh, jo a job analyst was about. So I'm a cyber metric cultural uh, analyst. 
There you go. Yeah. Every week I'm something else. The show's called Job Talk One. I'm so excited that you're listening to it, watching it, listening to it on KHTSAM 1220, heard all over the country on hometownstation.com. Go to jobtalk1.com. If you're looking for a better job, call me. Uh, I coach people up on how to make more money in their jobs. And uh, I'm expensive, but I'm worth it. Uh, or you can go to coachtunic.com and check me out. Or Google me, Coach uh, Ron Tunic. Uh, on Google. So Tom Karen's my very special guest. Coming up on our second segment is a wonderful uh, young lady, um, Mimi, uh, what's her last name? Mimi Donaldson. Donaldson. And Mimi's going to talk about speaking because uh, I, was, I, I was coaching a young man this morning, 26 years old, very bright, very educated. Educated, not that he went to college, but he, he became an expert in fixing computers, so we'll talk about that. You have to become an expert in something. How did you become an expert in HR? You're taking classes in industrial science, or how do, how do you go from taking these classes to becoming an expert in HR? Well, one of the, one of the areas of, of, I would say, for any profession, uh, there are certain uh, specialties, and mine happened to be labor relations, uh, negotiating with uh, unions and mm. uh, agents and others. So that that became my specialty. And then o over time, you get exposed. Even as a young man, I mean, you're like in your 20s and you're doing labor relations, it, I, really? I was in uh, my uh, mid-20s at that point. I, yeah, I was, uh, I was actually what they called at that time the bag man for our chief negotiator. So when when we would travel Ooh, around I the like country, the bag man. I, I carried the union proposals and mm -hmm. our responses no money in the bag yeah uh, but uh that's how i i learned uh, sitting next to someone like s talking to yourself uh, here as the coach i sat next to the chief negotiator and that's how i learned it's interesting uh if you're watching on facebook or you're listening to my voice on KHTS in southern california or all over the country on job talk one listen live i asked tom before we started i said how did you achieve so much in your life? You're still a young man. How did you do it? And he said, I took the tougher jobs. So I'm going to get into that after we take a, a break. Our show brought to you by Pools by Ben. If you're in Southern California and you own a, a pool, like today's a fake winter day. We got, right? <laughs> I had it's a, a sweater fake, on for it's a, a moment. <laughs> I know. You got a, it's a fake winter day. We got clouds outside. It's like, here's our winter day. It's like 65 degrees. That's what we consider winter day in Southern California. Some clouds over the top. And uh, look, I'm wearing a long, long sleeve, sleeve thing. It's <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, so uh, taking tougher jobs. Hold that question. I want to come back and talk to you about being a uh, uh, a bag man or being somebody that represented the boss in front of the labor unions, you've got to be patient, right? So you, you must have you must have known as the, or somebody must have identified in you that you're patient. Yeah, that's you know that's a that's a good point. Uh, I and obviously yes, you are observed, and then uh, at the time there was a lot of on the job kind of uh, training, if you would, where. Uh, I followed leaders and and participated and supported them in in what they were doing, and out of that they so you're they saw. you're a uh, I'm not going to say uh, I can't say can I say it on the air a butt kisser? <laughs> huh? No, I, I never you, saw myself as that. Uh, uh, you know, I'd let my work speak for itself is what I did. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the show's called Job Talk One. You're watching live. I'm Coach Ron Tunick. That's Tom Karens. That's the expert, and as you can see, I'm the good looking one. <laughs> so it's really um, obvious. Uh, I just wrote. I'm taking notes here. So we're all being observed. We're always everyone. You're being observed. I'm being observed. We're all being observed all the time. And I think when you're in the job, when you're when you're actually, you know, doing your job, you're being observed by your coworkers, by your boss, by your supervisors, and what I call the universe. So if you're slacking off. Uh, were you a slacker at any time? You I don't believe so. No. No. Mm -hmm. So I love the idea that you said to me you took the hardest jobs. What do you mean when you took the hardest jobs? Well, there actually, and some of this, uh, this is, I guess, sometimes the way people are wired. And uh, for me, I love the challenge. And so if there was an opportunity to go do something that I, I learned in the process and I stretched myself, 
I wasn't afraid to take that. And I, and I actually didn't see it as a risk uh, while there was risk associated with it. And uh, I worked for people that actually allowed me to do things the way I wanted to do them, even though they might do them differently. And, and that's But you probably negotiated the fact that you want to do things your way. You have such a nice way about you. I was thinking about you all day today because I knew I was going to interview you. You have such a nice way about you. So part of advancing yourself in your job or your career is knowing yourself, knowing, you know, I'm an out kind of outward going guy, a little pushy sometimes. Didn't always work for me when I was younger, but when you were younger, are, are, were you the same way you are now when you were younger? I would, I would say, you know, over time as I developed, I developed more self-confidence. Uh, I think early on in my development, that was one of the things I needed to uh, develop because I wasn't the most confident of of who I was, and uh, and I think that comes in time as you as you gain experience in that uh, as well. And I think that's the other side of. I've actually worked with some individuals who say, you know what, I don't know if you really know what you're talking about, but you sure talk confidently about it. And and I think that's when you you know you you know some things you you can come across sometimes, and maybe you <laughs> really don't know what you know, but you you have a lot of confidence. All right, so so let's go through that. your first few jobs. You're listening to Job Talk on Coach Ron Tunick, Tom Cairns, ran, ran Homeland Security. He was the HR director. He he probably had more responsibility than the secretary, right, in Homeland <laughs> Security. So uh, the show is called uh, Job Talk 1, and we normally have lights on in the studio. I don't know why we don't have lights on today. I'm hopefully, hopefully you can see us. So... As you're progressing on your job or you're progressing through life, uh, Tom Karen said a lot of interesting things here in the last couple of minutes. You're always being observed. You're always being observed. Uh, uh, Tom said just a minute or two ago, he always took the tough jobs. He always took the jobs uh, that nobody else wanted to take. And uh, for an employer like myself, you know that's somebody you want to go fight the Russian Navy on a raft. When somebody takes or raises their hand and says, I volunteer to do that tough job, that's the person you want on your raft when you go fight the Russian Navy. And then he said, you've got to be able to stretch. You know, a lot of us don't want to stretch. A lot of us don't want to go outside of our comfort zone. You've got to go outside your comfort zone to accomplish anything in life, anything. So um, let's go to your job. So how many jobs did you have in your 20s? Uh, in my 20s, I, I would say in my, uh, when I first started in the corporate life, I had uh, about seven jobs in wow. the first 10 years, seven uh, which jobs. would make you think I couldn't hold on to a job. But uh, they were actually you know, moves that were, were happening that in that time frame, I got a lot of experience, obviously, with the positions that I had. And that accelerated uh, my learning and accelerated my career uh, and then would allow me to perhaps leapfrog over some others as, as a result of that. And some of that required uh, the first the first element in this and and we've talked uh, even last week when we were talking with Steve uh, or Mark I think it was in terms of our wives Mark Hunter uh, being influential uh, it, I was very comfortable we were living in uh, New Jersey at the time and uh, hit a 12 year mark and actually had this is when I joined NBC uh, to move to Florida. And I was looking for every reason not to, believe it or not. I was comfortable where I was. And uh, it was my wife who was, was actually instrumental in, in being willing to go. And uh, that turned out to be a, a, a great career move. So part of that, I would say, is that not only maybe changing jobs in the areas where you are, but being willing to pick up and move, which, uh, uh, again, uh, gives you an opportunity that you wouldn't ordinarily get that soon. I think that's where uh, I always I always wanted to live like live in Idaho or Oregon or Washington, but I could. My wife was like a city girl. I was a kind of a country guy, and it, it's it, that's kind of a lucky break sometimes, you mm -hmm. know. And and we need luck. Uh, our job talk one is our show. You're listening to KHDS, and you're watching us live on on uh, Facebook and who who knows what other kind of social media. I'm the coach, Coach Ron Tunick. That's Tom Karens, and we're talking about Tom who has achieved so much in his young life. Uh, he was the Homeland HR director, 230,000 people, almost 19 years at NBC Studios. So every job that you had, you must have uh, uh, 
how do I want to say? It's been like a sponge absorbing the good things, taking notes, keeping track of what was working. So now you have these seven jobs in 10 years. Tell me about how you get the job at NBC Studios. You didn't, did you start at the top? I mean, did you start at the <laughs> HR director of NBC Studios? No, absolutely not. And built my way around. And I, I would say, and today you... Where you, did you start at, at NBC? Uh, well, oh, at NBC? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I started at the local TV station in uh, Miami, Florida. No kidding. So and I, what was your title there? Uh, there I, that's when I actually got the first title of HR director. At this uh, at NBC, the, at the NBC station there. Now, uh, did they have any famous people that you met? We I'm actually, only interested actually, in the famous. Well, people. you know what? The time frame when I was there, the, one of the general managers that I worked for, we actually hired Nancy O'Dell, uh, oh. and we also uh, David Bloom. I uh, think who, she's beautiful. She's uh, tall, right, Nancy? Nancy oh. came to us from uh, South Carolina. Yeah, and, still uh, on the air as well. Yeah. So, uh, and then David Bloom, who is, uh, has passed, he was uh, the reporter that. Uh, developed a blood clot right. in uh, the uh, Gulf Coast, and so you hired uh, Nancy as well. well. I was part of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's stop and ask Tom Karen's a question about how did you get the job? To, uh, so interviewing sure. for a job to me is like the hardest thing you have to do in life because you're anxiety ridden. How do I look? How do I sound? And this is a cheap plug for our next guest coming up, Mimi Donaldson, because ladies and gentlemen, if you're still watching this, if you still care and you're listening to what we have to say, let me just say this to you. Maybe the most important thing that you can do for yourself is learn how to present yourself, learn how to speak properly. Learn how to have great eye contact, but more importantly, learn how to use your voice to inspire people. So in your interviews, were you aware of all these things? Uh, no, I guess probably the, the most part is that the things that you enjoy doing, I think uh, you can't fake that. And so I think it came across, you know, who you are as a, as a person, how you represent yourself. And then uh, the things that I've uh, accomplished, uh, you mentioned uh, Miami, uh, that, that came about a, a variety of different ways. There was one individual who had met me a couple years before, and he ended up at NBC. He wasn't at NBC at that time, and then NBC bought a TV station, and it was a, a non-union location. And uh, that was a specialty of mine. Uh, well, not only did I negotiate with unions, but I also, if not keeping them out, if it wasn't necessary. Well, did you ever get any bribes from these unions? <laughs> no bribes, no bribes. Really? Never but, got uh, a bribe? Never got, like, tickets to the Marlins games or, or great dinners? Come on, man. You must have had something. No, but you know what? One of the groups that I negotiated with, the, believe it or not, the union owned a yacht in uh, ah, Fort Lauderdale, but I, never, it comes, but I never got access to the yacht. <laughs> so, oh, you never no, did? They, no, they had to sell the thing at some point in time uh, or another, but but that came about as a result of, of the experience So you had, had to fire people. We did, sure. So let's talk about that for a second. You're at NBC Studios in, in what city? Uh, well, I was here in Burbank uh, when I was no. at the studio. Oh. oh, I was in Miami, Florida. At Miami, that time. Florida. So I was that's Miami. A big, that's a big market. Philadelphia, New York, and then LA. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So your last stop with NBC was in LA. Yes. But let's go back to Miami, and then we'll go to LA. Sure. Uh, the show is called Job Talk One. Uh, firing people to me uh, next to interviewing for a job. My God, I've been fired. It, 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 it's, it, it just it ruins your day when you get fired. Absolutely. So you ruined a lot of people's days. Well, we tried not to. I mean, there's, there's aspects that uh, shouldn't be a surprise. There should so, be, when you, uh, so when you get called in and, and Tom wants to see you, that's it, right? Tom <laughs> wants to see you? Well, the, the misnomer a little bit is that uh, HR really doesn't do the, Who was the, the firing. It would be the, the manager, but usually HR was with that the manager. Exit plan, the exit. You know, don't you do yeah, the exit? Yeah, we do the interview? exit, sure. And people are crying? Crying, uh, lots of emotions that are, are about. So uh, I do two things. One is Why to, do you even have an exit interview? I If I got fired, I'm in fact, I did get fired, and I just went right to the airport and got on an airplane and flew home, and I had the worst pity party. I was as down and out when I got fired from my job. Yeah. Well, one they, of, I mean, it, it varies probably from company to company. They wanted an, uh, they wanted an exit. They interview. wanted to, but you weren't. No. Uh, yeah. 
Well, and some of that, you know, is whatever the person uh, is willing to do. Uh, but we tried to pri so provide some resources. So in the exit interview, you know. did you get some dirt on people? The, to find out. <laughs> 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 no, you, huh? you, you, would, you would really want their honest opinion about things that were, were happening, but perhaps. People are but, uh, uh, emotional. They're know. down. Uh, you know, I mean... Uh, I saw my boss. Anyway, never mind. The show's brought to you by Workway. Uh, we're going to come back with Tommy Cairns, uh, my very special guest today. Coming up here uh, in, a, in just a couple of minutes, Mimi Donaldson. But when we go to commercial break, I'm going to keep interviewing uh, Tommy for you. Uh, not for our worldwide audience, just for you because you're on Facebook. Uh, coming up here uh, is Mimi Donaldson. She's going to talk to us about how you learn how to present yourself. How do you do a 30-second elevator pitch? How do you communicate? What are the three things that you need to know to inspire people? She's a great guest. I had a pre-interview with her this morning. Our show brought to you by Workway. What does Workway do? They find you a better job. What does Workway do? They do all the hard work. Uh, you submit your resume to them. They do, they do the pre-interview. They do all the things we don't want to do. Workway. Go to workway.com. We'll come right back. We're going to come right back. And uh, I'm going to keep talking to you. Don't you go anywhere. Uh, to my KHTS listeners, please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The title of the show today, Justin, is Working Hard Does Pay Off. We'll be right back on Job Talk 1.